Okay, wir sind zurück. I'll be back. We are back with the speaker's corner right now. And uh, yeah, as I told you, we switch over to English because we have some guests from Canada. I'm very proud to welcome Josh and Mac from the Scavenger Studio. If I spelled this wrong, please correct me. And yeah, we will take some some look behind the scenes of the game season, a letter to the future. And yeah, I'll hand over to you, Josh and Mac. It's your stage. Hey, yeah, hello. Cool. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi we're hello. so, so glad to be there. Well, from Canada. Uh, very, very glad to to see everyone talking today. Very, very awesome environment that we made. We love, love the theme, take a breath. And we're here to uh, talk about how season fits into it. Uh, so yeah, here, let's move into the first slide that we got. So my name is Josh. I'm the playtest coordinator and marketing coordinator here at Scavengers. I've been playing games pretty much, I guess my whole life. And uh, I've taught game development for from yeah, for ages of students, like ages 10 all the way into their late teens, 18. So I very much love seeing new creative ideas, especially with what I'm seeing here today. Very awesome to see. And I am big, big love for Donkey Kong Country. It's something that I put in all my slides. Uh, Meg, I don't know, maybe you can say something about yourself. Uh, yeah, so my name is Meg, and I am um, the narrative designer at Scavengers, and I've been there since uh, 2020. It's been pretty great uh, through the pandemic and all that. And um, I'm also a game study student at um, Concordia, um, and I also taught at Concordia uh, for a while um, in digital art, and I wrote that <laughs> I'm a cow enthusiast and um, if you watch the trailer, you'll actually see the cows in the game, and that was one of the first areas that I got to work on in the game is uh, with the cows, which made me extremely happy. Uh, um, okay, yeah. let's move next. And yeah, what what is season to you, Meg? Um, so as I worked on season, I found that it was more and more about uncovering the past and remembering it for the future and taking things very slowly in order to do that. So paying attention to things around you and just slowing down things as you went. And this really came up with how we decided on having a bicycle in the game. Because originally it was going to be a motorbike that Estelle was going to ride throughout the game. But we wanted people to want to get off their their bike and to want to explore and to take photos and get information for the future in a way that they weren't just speeding past things the way that you would if you were on a motorcycle or in a car and you weren't taking the time. Yeah, and season season for me is like, it's just kind of about a lot of like human connection and doing, kind of spending your time doing what you love and almost cherishing the time that you do have kind of over your life and seeing what kind of things do you want to do? What kind of things do you want to be remembered for? What are the things that you are willing to leave behind in the spirit of living in this moment and doing something else? Um, and then the next thing that we wanted to just talk about is why are we working on season? Like, um, There's a lot of different things that we could have been working on. And everyone on the team will have a different reason of why. Why season? Why this game? Why they're there? And for me, it's going through having this calming mood and these mechanics that invite you to slow down. And the discoveries you have as you slow down and as you take pictures and as you talk to people, um, they hold deeper themes about humanity and how we remember things, how time shapes the world around you. Um, and how the past sort of like brings those ghosts into the future that you'll see in little things um, as you go around, which um, was really intriguing for me. Yeah, and that that's a really, really beautiful way to put it. Um, yeah, I would say everyone on our team has like a a different reason to want to work on this. It's it's very personal in many ways. Uh, the reason that I was so like attracted to it, like so many people that saw the debut trailer back in, oh, what was that, 20, 2019, 2020? Um, it was 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's like, 
it, it's such like a tangible, like vulnerable, heartfelt experience. It kind of causes you to just slow down, take a breath, uh, to throw the theme in there, um, and just really kind of value value what you're doing. Be like, oh yeah, you know what? I think I will kind of immerse myself in this. I think I will kind of um, try not to get stuck in one of those traps. Like I know, I know myself and many people that I've spoken to. Like we fall into traps of like I'm gonna have like a YouTube video and I'm gonna play a game at the same time, or I'm gonna listen to a podcast and play a game. And it thankfully I, I feel like we've reached a point in development with the with the team where it's a game that you really kind of like to sink yourself into. And just allow yourself to be vulnerable within. It's really something special, and I think uh, I'm really excited to see just on what I see in playtest for the rest of the world to uh, get their hands on it. Uh, we have uh, the gameplay trailer, and before I show it, I'll just give you like a little elevator pitch of what the game is. Um, so you take on the role of Estelle, who is from a faraway village on the, this cliffside who her friend has this dream and this dream is saying that the season is going to end and a season is a select period of time where everything is the way that it is um and there's a certain way of life um and there's a specific start and a specific end to that so when the end comes they prepare for a change so her way of preparing for a change is to say that she wants to leave this village for the first time, and no one's left the village in many years, um, to go see the wider world and collect things um, so that she's able to communicate what that season is like um, for everyone else, which um, to me is, is quite beautiful. Um, and then she goes on this adventure on her bicycle. Um, so I will play this and hopefully the sound works. She set out to record life at the end of this season. To make it real for people in the future. She asked us about living together. And we asked her about traveling alone. When the season turns, what will remain? Only what she saw, what she captured. She carries the sounds of the season with her. she listened made you want to tell her everything. I got to look in her journal. The world was telling her its secrets. I think she even figured out what will happen to us when the season ends. Is it going? Is it gone? Not yet. So, yeah. So that's our uh, that's our game. And um, the other thing that I like to highlight is our art design is usually something that people really like pointing out as um, something they enjoy. And our art director, his background is actually in uh, graphic novels and um, doing illustrative works. So a lot of our inspiration for the art is this like painterly feel, which is based on the fact that he likes using mediums that he uses his hands instead of digital art. Um, and I think that's really cool as a little fun fact. Uh, yeah, so I think now we're going to open things up for questions where you guys can ask us about um, development in the game, and we'll try and answer them to the best of our ability. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Josh and Mac, um, for this introduction to the game behind this, uh, and also talking about behind the scenes of season leather to the future. Unfortunately, 
We didn't ca uh, caught the, the sound from the trailer, but um. that's a good reason to play season here at the exhibition. And uh, I look in the audience, are there some questions? Do we have some questions right now? Yeah, you have a question, okay. We will hand over a microphone and then you get the first question from the audience. Hi. Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, what, what were your main influences? Because we were just joking that it looks like some kind of mixture of um, uh, Last Guardian or a Shadow of the Colossus mixed with East Shade and Alba Wildlife Adventure and stuff. Um, what were your... Oh God. <laughs> did did uh, you have any game, uh, <laughs> gameplay-wise inspirations? Uh, yeah, I'll take... Um, this one first, and then Josh, you can add anything. Um, it's interesting that you uh, that you mentioned Shadow of the Colossus because that was popping around in our Slack channel quite a lot through the development of this game with like camera angles, um, where we kept being like, "How do we sort of make things like seem grandest, like grandiose, um, and focus on this beautiful environment we have?" So we kept having all these clips of Shadow of the Colossus. Um, popping up. And then we also um, looked at games like um, uh, the Life is Strange games um, for me with narrative and um, also looking at, um, oh, my brain is completely blanking on all the games I played. <laughs> um, yeah, Josh, do you want to take this away? Because my brain has just forgotten. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, um, just regarding our the kind of like the pillars of our game, uh, we we do we do kind of take inspiration from a lot of those games that you were mentioning, like uh, Shadow of the Colossus, Last Guardian. Of course, like we see a lot of those comparisons regarding our art style whenever we get feedback about the game. Um, it, it's safe to say that we do play in these in these kind of uh, sectors that you're mentioning. Like we have we have aspects that you can say of like Abzu. Uh, Journey is a big one that we love to draw inspiration from. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch, another really big inspiration for us. Uh, yeah, that's probably one that you're trying to get off the top of your head. Thank um, you. <laughs> and re regarding inspiration, uh, we we've seen we have a an absolutely insanely talented art team that draws inspiration from the most obtuse places like we have a channel uh called the season notebook in our slack and it's like the most out there kind of inspirations like we'll have uh, like 1940s like italian cinema screenshots and then all the way to like um the graphic novel saga and things like that and everything in between uh it's it just kind of goes to show what uh what happens if you open up your mind to different mediums and different kind of um uh, medias that you consume and it's really really great that we have such like a team that's open to hearing about that stuff but i'm not sure if that answers your question another question from the audience um, no so ah yeah there's one more question please hi thank you um it's not a question it's more like an expression because uh earlier this summer i did a cycling trip with my audio recorder and my camera and then I played your demo here in the festival it felt like I was brought back to this time and so thank you very much <laughs> yeah oh, that's amazing that is incredible I'm so happy to hear that yeah that's, that's nice. very cool there's uh quite a few people at our studio are like do the really long bike rides um where they'll just like take their camera and like in their bike and they'll like leave the country and they'll go from like point a to point b and then they'll come back um, so, yeah, it's really nice. So, I have one more question. Um, why did you choose the bicycle as a vehicle? Because when I've been to Vancouver years ago, I've seen a guy in a pickup and he played the blues harp and I thought about, yeah, this is like chilling and Canadian guy. <laughs> um, and yeah, of course, why did you uh, have chosen this vehicle? Otherwise, um, um, you can go by 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 feet also or what's about the mechanics like do you have other ve vehicles in the game um so the only vehicle that you have is a bicycle and like i said earlier um it originally was a motorbike and the reason for that is our writer and our art director 
Um, our writer was traveling the world and hitchhiking all over the place. And that's where he got this idea for Susan uh, was through these hitchhiking trips that he was taking. And by that, like he was taking all sorts of forms of vehicles. And the one that really stuck out to him was how people would pile onto motorbikes so that they could weave through streets. So our art director then drew this picture of a motorbike. And that was one of the first pieces of art um, that we had for Susan, where we knew that we wanted this person to have this like open air vehicle where you could get these 360 views where you're unobstructed. Um, but then with that, we wanted to slow it down. So we switched over to a bicycle, which worked really well because there's so many people in our team that ride bikes and like bicycle culture in Montreal is quite a lot. Like I'm, I have a bike behind me that you can see that I'm working on. Um, so there's like a, a lot of bicycle culture here in Montreal. Um, and with that, we have um, integration of uh, the haptic controls in the PlayStation 5 controller, where you use the triggers for pedaling, and we can put in resistance controls. So in the same way that we would have resistance controls when you take a picture, that it has the resistance, so that you have like the satisfying click feeling. Um, if you're going up a hill on your bicycle, it's a bit heavier for you to do it with the triggers as well, which we thought was really cool in development. And that was one of the first things that I got to see when I got onboarded to, um, to season was just this hill and the programmers being so proud of themselves and being like, look, I'm going down the hill, I'm going down the hill, I'm going up the hill. Um, so it was also like the amount of joy that was brought by this, by this mish, like this, uh, this thing that we had made, instead of just like, if you get in a truck, you like hold down the accelerator or something like that. Like they didn't have that same level of joy um, with with the design process. So yeah. that's why I bike. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fun. Okay. So there are no questions. Uh, I check again last time. There are no questions in the chat, but uh, I think we, we got some really nice uh, answers from you. Thank you very much once again that you have um, taken us with uh, on the journey with the game season, A Letter to the Future. Um, it was a great pleasure for uh, follow all the speeches today. Unfortunately, the time is up in the speaker's corner. In a few minutes, the program continues with Walk With Me Gegenwart. And this will be like, no, no, Walk With Me Zukunft. Sorry for that. And it will be, um, yeah, a live Let's Play in Fallout 76. So stay tuned on the Twitch channel. Uh, in the meantime, you're welcome to take a closer look at the exhibition here at Jupiter or in the Play Valley. Have fun at Play 22. And yeah, we see uh, each other again in the Speaker's Corner on Sunday and start about noon European time. So. Thank you. Uh, uh, warm applause for you, Josh and Mac, once again. Thank you very much. And yeah, we have got some reasons to play season. Bye bye. See you soon here at Twitch.